And we are back. Our next guest wrote two books exploring the powerful messages celebrating the beauty and significance of traditional black hairstyles. Now, these works not only educate, but also inspire children to cherish their heritage and then see the beauty in their unique hairstyles. Joining me now is author Zenda Walker, and thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. I was captivated because when I looked and I saw the title, it says, Know Your Heritage. Not heritage, oh, yes. but heritage. Absolutely. So well, what are you talking about heritage uh, in the eyes of blacks, African Americans? Yes. People and of color? They're of huge. course. <laughs> <laughs> so heritage, the traditional word heritage means the traditions, practices, customs, and beliefs that are passed down from a predecessor or an ancestor. And so when we talk about heritage, H-A-I-R, mm -hmm. right? Right. <laughs> I-T-A-G-E, we're talking about the hair customs, traditions, practices, and beliefs that are passed down. And what I like to say is that everyone has a heritage story, right? Stories that link to your childhood experiences, your adult experiences, but also your broader history. Yeah, and so here you are authoring Heritage and talking yes. about, you've got two different ones, Zara's Wash Day and Zion's Grown. Oh. Unpack this for us. Okay, so I was inspired to write Zara's Wash Day in 2020 during the pandemic. Uh, COVID, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was just an interesting time for a lot of people, right? We were struck with this fear of not really understanding what COVID was. We were all isolating. Mm -hmm. As a mom, I was homeschooling and trying to work a corporate job. Right. <laughs> and then we were hit with this civil unrest in America. And so during that time, I had more meaningful time with my daughter on our hair wash days. And hair wash days are so important for African-American people, or people with curly, coily, Afro-coily hair. Mm -hmm. And it's a time for bonding. It's a time for just like really just um, connecting with your family members and loved ones. And I noticed that my daughter from the age of around two and three was, you know, starting to ask a lot of questions about her hair. Mommy, why is my hair curly, coily? Why do you braid my hair? Why do you bead my hair? Why do I have to do these hairstyles? And I said, you know, I thought, you don't really have to wear these hairstyles, but there is a lot of history. And I used to tell her that it's because maybe this is what mommy did when she was younger, but then I realized, there's a bigger story behind that. Let's talk about the why behind these hairstyles so that she could really start to understand that there's a, a beautiful celebratory story behind our hair. So people who read this get that story and they'll find out more about that story. And I'm sure that's part of the takeaway, right? To say, listen, I need you to appreciate where you come from. Absolutely. And it, it really was, you know, it's a kind of an extension of what I did, was going through as a young girl. Um, she, my daughter was starting to have some insecurities about her hair, but I realized this is something that's very generational among people of color, right? Mm -hmm. We, um, even though we may have affirming homes, some of us don't, but right. many of us do have affirming homes. We go out into the outside world and we sometimes get different messages and messages that tell us that we're not beautiful or that our hair is not professional or we're not worthy because of our aesthetic. And so I thought, being more positive, if incorporating positive language on our hair wash days um, in connection to our aesthetic would really help my daughter, also help my inner child, but also help other families. A picture is worth a thousand words. That's what it said, right? A picture is worth a thousand. Absolutely. So there's about thousands of pictures in here and thousands of words. <laughs> what are some of the things that you want people to say, listen, you know what, when, I, when you see this, no beautiful, no you know, applicable, what, what are some of the words that come to mind? Oh, so, so much. I, there, I always say things like, you know, your hair, our hair is our crown, it's right. our crowning glory, whether you have hair or not, right? right. Because there's um, a beauty in the story behind that. But what I want people to see is, shout out to my illustrator, Princess Karibo, who's a beautiful illustrator from uh, West um, Africa, Nigeria. Um, I wanted to show that our, um, I really wanted to show children and adults that you can see yourselves in these characters. This, this is a relatable story where children are experiencing a level of insecurity or there's a moment in time where they question who they are and their self-identity. And I want people to see through the beautiful art, through the symbolism where I celebrate some of the um, regions in Africa mm -hmm. where these hairstyles come from. I want them to see that 
Um, this is a beautiful story that we, there's more to the African-American story, specifically in these books, than we learn in traditional educational um, environments. And in uh, Zahra's wash day, you've got a forward here from somebody else. <laughs> we, didn't, we, were, we didn't even thought I didn't see that, right? But go ahead, talk to me about this here. Okay, so, you know, writing this book mm -hmm. and, 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 and broadening it to a series, because I realized that there's a message here. Every community has a hair story, so let's go further. Right. I, th it opened up many doors for me. Um, I was able to speak on many panels. I was living in L.A. at the time, and um, I was speaking on panels and going to different schools and talking about heritage and the history behind our mm -hmm. hair. And I was able to speak on a panel where um, the beautiful actor and uh, New York Times award-winning author, Lupita Nyong'o, her stylist was actually on a call. And when she was looking for someone to maintain her locks, when she had um, these micro locks, um, sister locks on, uh, while she was filming Wakanda Forever 2, he called on me because he knows that that's my background. I'm a hairstylist. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to meet her and maintain her hair for about a year and a half, two years, and develop a relationship with her. And I did ask her if she would be willing to write the foreword to Zara's Wash Day. And I'm honored that she um, wrote me her beautiful hair story. And for yourself, what's that feel like to have her write a foreword, given the fact that, you know, we all know how we feel about Wakanda forever. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Lupita is an amazing human being. I feel honored that she wanted to share her story in my book. I feel as though um, it says a lot as well about um, how connected we all are through hair. And so I am grateful that she, um, that she is sharing her story through this book. You know, I'm, I'm watching the Olympics and I'm hearing a lot of stories about athletes and issues just germane to this, right? People having issues with, I can't wear the, my hair the way that I am. I have to wear it in a quote unquote culturally acceptable fashion. That's in this for another show and another platform, right? And so many people are missing their moment or feeling devalued because they authentically can't be themselves. But here you are in your writing saying, be authentic, be, be bold with it, be brash with it, and be okay with it. Absolutely, I mean, these books are my way of contributing to the movement of self-esteem, building self-confidence, and also infusing culturally responsive education into our children's um, curriculum. Um, as you stated, this is a topic that has been hot for many, many years. I right. won't tell my age, but we <laughs> have all been, you know, witnessing even celebrities and notable people like, you mentioned the Olympics, somebody like, um, like a Simone Biles, for instance, will automatically be um, scrutinized about her hair. Meanwhile, she's this incredibly accomplished, talented, smart, representative of our country and yet she's still made to feel less than or not professional or that she's not worthy because um, automatically her hair is just not good enough or not professional or not mm -hmm. presentable and so we see that in the school system where certain protocols in different schools are um, preventing our kids from either attending school or going to their graduations and celebrating their academic accomplishments because their hair doesn't meet certain protocols and so this is a form of discrimination, and that's why even from a legislative perspective, we're hearing about legislation like the Crown Act, right? Creating mm -hmm. a respectful and open world for natural hair. This legislation has been passed in 26 states, but we have 24 more to go, and there's a lot of debate here, right? right. I'm hoping in the next administration that it gets passed, but it really is a law that prohibits discrimination against cultural hairstyles, and it's needed. Yeah, we gotta come back and talk about that for sure. I, I wanna get this question in because I think it's important real quickly. Um, you talked about 2020. Yes. You talked about the fact of during COVID, this is when this was written. You talked about civil unrest. Yes. How much of watching what was going on during the civil unrest said, this is gonna be my contribution and I gotta do something? It was a huge part. It was a huge part. My daughter and I, as you know, we learned about what was going on with George Floyd, but I also 
I'm a Bronx native. Right. I grew up in the Bronx in the 80s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so there are many stories like this. We hear about, um, you know, the Central Park, the Exonerated Five, mm -hmm. right? All the different names and hashtags. And it was very triggering for me in 2020 when we were going through all of um, the civil unrest. And so right. I protested. I walked, you know, I did so many different things. And I thought, wow, I'm going to put power to my pen. Mm -hmm. And this is my way of using my creativity and turning something really powerful into a, a movement. Right. Pain and the empower. purpose and the passion. It's all about empowerment. That's it. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you. Zinda Walker is an author, and she's got these beautiful books here, Zara's Wash Day, Zion's Grown, where people get them before we go. Absolutely. Um, www.knowyourheritage, H-A-I-R-I-T-A-G-E.com. You can get it on all um, online bookstores, including Amazon.com. Um, and Zion's Crown comes out September 10th. Zara's Wash Day is out now, but you can pre-order at any of those online outlets as well. Looking forward to it. Cinda, thank, thank you so you. much for being with us. Now listen, I want you to know if you want more information, go ahead and visit the website knowyourheritage.com and you'll get these beautiful books and definitely some empowerment.